What is a miracle? That's the question I want to ask you and engage you in answering this morning. When last have you seen a miracle wrought in your life? When last have you seen a miracle wrought in the lives of your close relative? Your answer to that question will be based on your definition of the miracle. An extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by nature or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to divine agency. In other words, anything that science cannot explain, we usually call it a miracle, sometimes an act of God. The Oxford Dictionary says, an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. So by our definition of miracles, we have come to create a distinction or a dichotomy between the ordinary and the extraordinary, the natural and the supernatural. So we have something, something that we attribute to the act of God and other things we refer to as being ordinary. But there's a serious problem with this concept and idea of a miracle. As pointed out by one famous theologian, Grudem, this definition of miracle actually presents what I refer to as, or what theologians refer to as a deistic view of God. What's a deistic view? A deistic view of God presents a view that shows God as someone who is, who is not involved in the world. In other words, God created the world at the beginning and he set some laws in place by which the world must operate and the world continually operate on autopilot. That's a deistic view of God. And the problem with this definition of miracle is that it is suggesting that God only interrupts the operations of this world sometimes. You know, we can only see the evidence of God's work sometimes and some people go through their whole lives without seeing a quote-unquote miracle. One of the main problems with this definition of miracle is the idea of God's interruption. Who is God interrupting when he works a miracle? That interruption suggests that God was working all along and then he interrupts whatever operation to work a miracle. There is a problem with that definition. And I want to help you to see it by asking another question. The things that we refer to as being natural and ordinary, what's ordinary about them? What's ordinary about the sun rising in the morning and through the process of photosynthesis continually to give nutrients to the plants and health to life on earth. What's ordinary about how your body operates each day? What's ordinary about your digestive systems and the other systems in your body, the nervous system, the reproductive system? What's ordinary about when you plant a seed in the ground and water it? It begins to blossom and bear fruit. What's ordinary about that? operation. Who is behind all of that? In other words, if your eyes could be open, you will be able to see the supernatural work of God every day, every moment, in every aspect of your life. I would want to say, therefore, that you are a miracle. In Psalm 19 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showed his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So every day, nature tells us that God is constantly at work. Romans chapter 1 and verses 19 and 20 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So constantly, the power of God is manifested. As a matter of fact, Jesus, in the book of St. John chapter 5, when the Jews accused him of working on the Sabbath, he said to them, from the beginning of creation, my father has been working and I also work. In other words, even on the Sabbath, God has to be constantly at work to sustain life on this earth. Theologians usually refer to that as providence. But I want you to see that providence is not very far from miracle. We should not create a too great a dichotomy for them. 
I will tell you my definition of miracle in a little while. But for now, I want you to understand that our current idea of miracle has a challenge. Psalm 104, one of my favorite psalms in the Bible, is riddled with the concept of how God constantly sustains the animals and life on this earth by his power, by his wisdom. The Bible tells us that he's the one who sends forth the springs into the hills and they go down into the valleys to give life to the plants and bread to humans and animals. In our book, Desire of Ages, page 367, Ellen G. White says, In feeding the 5,000, Jesus lifts the veil from the world of nature and reveals a power that is constantly exercised for our good. In the production of earth's harvest, God is working a miracle every day through natural agencies. The same work is accomplished that was wrought in the feeding of the multitude. Men prepare the soil and sow the seed, but it is a life from God that causes the seed to germinate. It is God's rain and air and sunshine that cause it to put forth first the blade, then the air, after that the full corn in the air. It is God who is every day feeding millions from earth's harvest field. Let me go back to the question I asked you earlier. When last have you seen a miracle? I would like you to answer it by pinching yourself and say, I am a miracle. I am a miracle. In the book Ministry of Healing, commenting on Jesus' healing of the paralytic, she also says, the Savior in his miracles reveal the power that is continually at work in man's behalf to sustain and to heal him through the agencies of nature. God is working day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment to keep us alive, to build up and restore. When any part of the body sustains injury, healing process is at once begun. Nature's agencies are set at work to restore soundness. But the power working through these agencies is the power of God. All life-giving power is from Him. When one recovers from disease, it is God who restores him. When last have you seen a miracle? I'm sure your answer should be different by now. God works in our lives every day. So, what's a miracle? A better definition for miracle, according to Grudem, God's less common way of operating. So, a miracle is not God interrupting natural science. It is just God's less common way of working. For example, when he fed the 5,000 from five loaves and two fishes, that's not a common way of working. But it's still, still a miracle. And it is no less or greater a miracle than what he does every day to sustain us through his providence. So we know that from the Bible that miracles are really for unbelievers. Miracles are really for people who are not seeing God and they, or they have come to take God for granted. And so God has to work in a different way to get their attention. But for the believer, for the one who knows the word of God, they are able to see a miracle every day. They are able to appreciate the mighty working power of God in your lives every day. And they do not take for granted. They do not come to call God's miracle working power ordinary because they recognize God's power at work in their lives every day so we can say with confidence i am a miracle you are a miracle because god is working in your life continually